Alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning, good afternoon, even good night everyone uh, So, uh, we're now are talking about a more complex uh, social cognition processes uh, than last week Yeah, so last week you have learned about how individuals form impression about others and also how individuals uh, how social schemas work yeah, in order to make sense of our work and how uh, social information uh, is categorized uh, inside our uh, as a part of our mental processes yeah so now we're going to talk about uh, attribution theories and that would concern on uh, some explanation about how individuals looking for explanation about their own behavior and others uh, behavior yeah and this explanation could form as a casual, not casual, but causal relationship yeah, between the behavior and also the motives behind that behavior. Right, so it is a very interesting processes and we, we, we do this almost all the time. And it's also uh, very important to understand the logic behind these processes and how this process would uh, give you whether this process would give you an, an accurate information about the cause of certain behaviors or even not or even in, inaccurate yeah, inaccurate uh, explanation about uh, certain behaviors not only your behavior your own behavior but also others behavior so um the the basic idea of attribution itself is that we often as an individuals we often uh, seek for explanation for everything that happens yeah uh, for everything that happens in our world either in physical phenomenon something like maybe earthquakes or even the pandemics itself we're, 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 we're always looking for the explanation why it could happen and not only that yeah we also need some explanation why certain behavior occurs yeah or performed by others or even for uh, or something our behaviors that we we, we we are that ourselves that we do uh, we that we do ourselves and we try to seek for explanation about our particular emotions that arises from certain situation and sometimes that explanation requires a causal uh, explanation so we need to seek the motives we need we need to look for the motives underlying motives uh, why certain behavior can occur and sometimes the explanation itself could not be that simple yeah so often we uh, we assess or we evaluate certain uh, potential co uh, causes yeah for certain behavior for our specific behaviors and then we look for um, uh, more uh, the, the most closely related factors that could explain the whole behavior itself and there are some psychological theories that could explain how this mechanism works, yeah, and how um, uh, how this causal prediction, yeah, or, or this prediction could come out as a part of our mental processes. And uh, one explanation why we do this all the time is that it's I think it's inherent in our it, it's a part of human nature. We always try to look for uh, causes for certain things for everything that happen in our world because we want to predict we want that our envir environment is under our control so that it's easy for us to navigate yeah, our responses and also it's it's um it's basically will will give us uh, lots of benefits in order to uh, in order to be more precise in giving uh, responses to certain stimulus that that occurs yeah and so basically, the, the, based on its definition, yeah, attribution itself, it's a process that we give labels, we give explanation to certain behaviors, not only our own behaviors, but also it could be uh, other people's behavior. And imagine that you're uh, going into a supermarket, for example, then the label itself, yeah, the label uh, that is attached to the product that you're going to buy will give you a lot of information about uh, the product itself and you could decide whether you should buy it or just look for another product. So that's, that, that is why attributing a behavior, uh, a behavior uh, and seeking for explanation why that behavior occurs will give you a lot of information to, that, that is important for you to give 
decision about something to give decision about uh, how to respond to that behavior yeah so this is why uh, attribution process is an important uh, feature of navigating social relationships so you you need to do this in order to be more uh, in order to be able to uh, be able to navigate your social relationship with others yeah and I'm going to explain to you five different sets of theories yeah that explains how uh, this process works and those theories uh, could not be seen as contradic contradictory or competing theories in fact they are complementary to each other which is quite interesting so we're going to start from the very basic the the very classic theories of of attribution and then you will see that the next or the subsequent theories that I'm going to explain would complement uh, the older theories in a way that ha in a way that uh, explaining attribution processes in a, in a richer way in a more complex way uh, so the first theories that you're going to learn is the the classic knife psychologist theory from uh, Fritz Heider and then we're going uh, forward to uh, the theory of correspondent inferences from Jones and Davis and then you're going to learn about the covariation model yeah from Harold Kelly and then theory of emotional liability because of course yeah attribution would also involve emotion and emotion itself is an attribution yeah so you're going to uh it's a make sense it's, it's it's quite makes sense that when someone behave in certain ways you could uh, use their emotion yeah their emotion that might uh that might cause that behavior is it, it's a part of attribution itself so there's a part of our emotion uh, as a function of attribution so this is why emotion is important as well yeah so we could apply attribution theory to understand more about uh, human emotion and the last one would be uh, self-perception theories but i'm going to explain a very little bit of it because we're going to learn this a bit more deeper in the i think in the week seven or in week uh, eight yeah and it corresponds to how we construct a knowledge about ourselves yes yeah? so we call it self-concept in social psychology so this theory will explain how we construct uh, self-concept so the knowledge about ourselves yeah so uh, going into the the first and the most classic theories in explaining uh, attribution is the knife psychologist yeah from Fritz uh, from Fritz Heider so this is the one of the earliest theories that explain how attribution works yeah and so basically this theories assumes that how we attribute uh, other people behavior or also our own behavior is a process that looks like a rational and scientific like uh, cause and effect analysis which means that uh, how we seek for explanation how uh, certain behavior works is quite similar to how scientists yeah, uh, looking for explanation about uh, various phenomena so it looks like we're, we're we're basically a naive scientist yeah so we construct our own theories yeah we construct our own presupposition, uh, presupposition about how certain behavior can occur yeah and we 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 observe so so it starts from we observe certain behavior from other people for example and then we construct a lay theories yeah theory of the commons yeah <laughs> common theories about uh, how that behavior could occur yeah and why it could happen so basically it's very hard for us as a human to see certain behavior uh, appears as random yeah so we we tend to look for phenomena we, we look we tend to look for pattern yeah uh, from certain behavior and it's really hard to see this as a random it's randomly appear so for example if you see someone who wears um who wears suits and tie for example and how they dress yeah how they dress how they appear in the, in a wedding reception for example it's really hard to see that as a uh, as a random as a random behavior but it's something that is motivated so we know that certain behavior has underlying causes yeah so this is why we tend to construct theories yeah 
based on uh, based on the data that we gather from observation and we try to connect certain motives with the behavior that we observe from other people yeah so this is what it looks like it looks like we construct certain theories and it's it works uh, quite similar to uh, to scientists when they look for explanation about uh, about various phenomena so for example if i want to gather uh, if i want to understand why uh, why uh, heat for example why heat could dry up my my wet clothes yeah so then i try what i what i do is that i observe the phenomena i gather lots of data and then i construct the theory so it works like that it works very similar to uh, very similar to uh what scientists do as their daily jobs yeah but again <laughs> this is a, a what makes it quite different from uh, from scientific work is that uh, scientists requires a lot of data repeated observation and very careful and systematic and methodic ways to observe the phenomena before they actually come into conclusion but what happened in attribution in the process of attribution we don't do that yeah we don't do that because we have limitation we don't have time to actually gather lots of different data we only uh, rely on uh, anecdotal observation only one or two observation and then we're very confident and then it it's fair it's 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 enough to make us very confident in concluding that there must be some correlation be behind these motives and also the behavior that occurs so this is why we are prone to what we call illusory correlation this is something that we have discussed last week yeah so we tend to see uh two completely different phenomena uh, has some correlation behind those phenomena while it's actually a very spurious one yeah so of course as a naive psychologist we don't even though the process quite similar to scientific work we are prone to this bias yeah we are prone to this bias because we we simply don't have time to gather lots of data like sciences do yeah um and next week we're going to talk about attribution bias yeah and you'll learn that you that you will learn that uh human actually or a cognitive miser we tend to look for shortcuts and we are sometimes overconfident in concluding our judgment yes this is very interesting one and because we try to construct theories yeah we'd like to have a theory about why certain behavior occurs because we want to predict because we want to have control over our environment it is more predictable to conclude correlation or to conclude causal relationship between the behavior and also with a stable factor such as personality so for example yeah so for example if you are a teacher suppose that you are a teacher then you teach in a class then you have a student who who comes extremely late yeah like 30 minutes after the class started then it's tempting yeah it's more tempting to conclude that uh that the lateness of the student is more caused by its personality or its internal cause maybe the students are lazy or uh, they just uh don't really have uh the urgency the or the the, the importance of coming coming uh of coming of coming on time to the class here yeah, rather than seeing it as a uh, as a product or as an outcome of external causes such as maybe they have uh, maybe they just experience a very bad stuff when they are when they were on the way uh from their house from their house to the class yeah so what would what, like to we prefer to look for a more internal that because it is stable it is more predictable then looking for the external causes and if we attribute that's that behavior to their internal causes it makes it it must it makes it uh, easier for us to then conclude they must be late again next time yeah because they just don't really have the sense of urgency to come on time to the class yeah so this is why we have this tendency this bias yeah because we prefer to look for an explanation 
that comes from or the motivation that comes from the internal aspects of the actor rather than the external sense yeah the, rather than situational factor that affects that behavior and of course yeah uh, I, you might have the clue already that we uh, we often attribute certain behavior yeah certain behavior based on two different factor it could be caused by personal factor yeah so one behavior could occur because of the internal factor that comes from the actor yeah or it could be from the situational factor or the environmental factor that affects that behavior so if you uh if you come across a student who comes late to the class for example then the internal factor that attributes to that behavior is because the student is lazy they don't have uh the sense of of coming on time they don't have this motivation to come on time to the class or maybe they are just less motivated to 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 follow or to enroll the course and the situational factor could be maybe the traffic <laughs> maybe it's the traffic that causes that causes the lateness or even because they just had misfortune for example when they have flat fire yeah or any other situational factor that may occur yeah that uh, that may cause that uh, that latentness yeah but again yeah we tend to be biased yeah we tend to be biased uh, in preferring internal than external explanation of certain behavior yeah and we're going to discuss this next week uh, more deeply about attribution uh, bias and of course <laughs> based on the knife psychologist theory uh, so basically, we have two different factors that cause uh, that, uh, that 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 we often use as a cause uh, that we often attribute to certain behavior. So the first one would be the internal factor or dispositional factor. And the second one would be the external or the situational factor. Yeah. So if we assign uh, explanation or causes uh, uh, causes of certain behavior, uh that comes from the uh, that comes from the internal aspects of the act of the actor such as the personality or ability perhaps or emotion then we call it internal internal uh internal uh, attribution and then if we assign uh certain causes that comes from the situation or the external factor from of the of the actor itself himself or their self themselves and then we say that we're, we're we're using external attribution yeah to explain certain behavior so that would be the end of the first video uh we're going to continue to the second video where i'm going to explain two different uh attribution theory so the first one would be uh correspondent inferences from jones and davis and the second would be um, co-variation model from Harrod and Harrod Kelly. All right, so thank you for watching.